Hey folks, Sega Sonic fan here, and today we're talking about the Nintendo Power Pad, which is this thing right here. It's like a Dance Dance Revolution type mat made for the original Nintendo. They only made like 13 games for it, but it's pretty cool. And uh, I had a friend of mine who really needed to hook it up to a PC. He's making a homebrew game and he needed to control it with the Power Pad. Uh, he's going to be uh, displaying this at um, a video game conference, and so needed it really urgently. And so he had bought this, the USB NES RetroPort V2. It's only 10 bucks. And it says here that it does exactly what he needed. It connects to a power pad right there. Uh, and so he bought this thinking everything was fine, but then of course it didn't work. And he came to me and was like, help me. Help me, Sega Sonic fan, you're my only hope. So uh, I went ahead and we, we, we found out that like only one or two buttons would work on the power pad when connected to this thing. So he bought a second power pad and he had bought a second one of these and still nothing was working. So I took out the guts of the power pad, which is this, and it's a pretty simple beast. You have uh, two shift registers here. And uh, the way it works, as far as I understand it, is you have your NES controller port here. There's a clock signal, which is just your general timing. There's a latch, which tells it when to grab the data. And there's a there's three data out pins, essentially. This data pin, D1 right here, um, is just for, it's for other, it's for the main Nintendo controller, the two button controller. I don't know if other peripherals use it, but that one mainly is, is the most important one that uses it. And so your regular uh, Nintendo controller only uses these four pins and of course VCC, which is five volts in. That's it. So the power pad actually doesn't use D1 at all. D1 is not connected. It uses D3 and D4 instead. And so these represent uh, a set of buttons each. And depending on the position of the clock and the latch, it will grab the data from there. And uh, that's how it will calculate which button you're using. Seems simple enough. However, when I hook this up to this retro port, this is the uh, official, this is the RetroPort V2 adapter right here. And I got this guy and I got the cable. I had shortened the cable, by the way. The reason why this is all spliced together is I actually shortened this cable because it wasn't working and I was thinking, I don't know, I was kind of running out of ideas. Maybe it was a clock signal, maybe it was some interference. And the original cable is quite lengthy. So I went ahead and shortened it, but that didn't solve the problem. But it's still a shorter cable. So let's go ahead and plug this in and I'll show you what I mean. Go over here to game controllers, retry. Oh, I might have to uh, unplug and plug this back in. This is hard to do one handed while I'm filling. All right, and there's our NES retro port. So if I retry, well, I have to exit out of this one. All right, properties. And there we go. Nothing's spazzing out right now, so that's good. And the really easy way to test this is you just short, these, these two large planes are ground, and then these are each of your buttons going to the shift register. Simple as that. Um, there's a membrane, like a flexible membrane that goes to the pads, which connects to these, um, a la, you know, like a typical keyboard on a computer, on a laptop computer. And all you gotta do is short ground to one of these buttons, and it should show up here on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and short that and you'll see nothing's happening and if I go there nothing's happening and if I take a if I go on the other side I think one of the buttons will register don't know why but there we go button six see that one turn bright red that's the only one that registers I think there might be one other one if I go down the chain but um, the only one that's that registers right now is uh, of the ones I've done so far is button six and the other ones just don't do anything. Um, and so, you know, we didn't know what was wrong. It's like we had two power pads with two of these adapters. Nothing was working. Eventually we gave up because um, he had told me about an Arduino version that, that uh, somebody had developed. In this case, um, I believe it was uh, this guy. Where is he? MC Teapot. MC Teapot. Yes. Thank you, MC Teapot on GitHub. And actually, if you look at the code, 
This is the uh, the PowerPad reader code. Actually, it's not the reader code that you want, even though some instructions say that. You want the PowerPad Uno Joy code. And if we look at the code, actually, I'll open up here. It is by, I want to give credit where credit is due, this Cyborg Dino, June 2013, Los Angeles. So give credit to that person because they did all the hard work. And basically, what you're doing is you're installing the Uno Joy, which uh, is a special program developed by somebody else. By, scroll up here. Alan Chatham developed the Uno Joy, I guess. At least that's what it says on, at least that's what's on GitHub here. Uno Joy turns your Arduino into a joystick, a PC compatible joystick, which is exactly what we want. So that's great. A couple things you should know though. So one, you have to have an actual Arduino. You cannot have a knockoff one, such as these uh, bootleg ones that I have. Um, that are much cheaper. You can't use one of those. It has to be an original Arduino. And the reason why is it has to have one of these USB controller chips. Because the way this works is it's actually a hack for this controller chip to turn the Arduino into a joystick. This controller chip in mine is an Atmel, or it's an Atmega uh, 16U2. Um, actually, we can just zoom in on it. If my phone will get it good. Let's see. I can also use my uh, microscope here. Maybe that's smarter. Sorry for the shaky camera as always. Such is the curse of watching my videos. And there it is. It's upside down, but you can see it's a Mega 16 U2 by Atmel. Hopefully you can all make that out. And so that's the chip that we really need to uh, do this hack. And there's these two pins here that you're going to need to short. And I'm not going to go through all the instructions. It's a total, I'm just not into doing that stuff, software type stuff. But it's all online. It's all on GitHub. And maybe I'll put the links below if I'm not feeling too lazy. Uh, the GitHub things that you're going to need, you're going to need this one by Alan Chatham with the Uno Joy. You're going to need the Arduino Core-AVR because you're going to need to update the firmware of your Arduino Uno, and you're gonna need the MCT Pot PowerPad Arduino. Um, you're gonna need the PowerPad Uno Joy. That's the code you need, not the PowerPad Reader. So there's a lot of, there's some guides online that say PowerPad Reader, don't even use that. Uh, so yeah, I got this all spliced together. I ended up using a, uh, I pulled this plug out of a, an original NES. I have a bunch of broken original NESs, so that was convenient enough. And I went ahead and used the plug that's on the original NES is a JST style plug. So I was able to use just a, a JST, I believe it's an eight pin JST. Maybe maybe it's not a JST actually, I take that back. Uh, these, are the, these are the connectors I was using in my uh, Game Gear mod actually. I take that back, I don't think it's a, well, maybe it is a JST, but it's not It's not a PH JST connector. Anyway, I'll try to find out more information on that. Um, sorry, I just grabbed this out of my uh, connector's bins, and they're not actually labeled, so I can't tell you off the top of my head what's, what this connector is. But they're not too rare. They're not too hard to find. The green plug is from the, uh, the, the an original toaster NES that goes to this plug. So when you have this connector, it just makes it easier. You can you can cut those wires too if you want, but having this connector just makes it easier to solder um, some wires to the board and then you can disconnect this sometime later if you ever just change your mind or want to use this, this plug for something else. And so when you wire it up, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, some guides uh, do kind of screw this up. One of the hardest things I realized working on uh, Nintendo systems and working with Arduino is the misinformation that's out there. It's a lot of incorrect information because a lot of like newbies are doing this stuff and they're not double checking their work. At least that's my take on it. But um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the code and I'll show you the, the way to check your wiring. And it's right here. So instead of trusting the guide, look at the code itself and how it works. And so you can see there's latch, clock, data one, which you're not gonna use. It's a little confusing because it's 
in here. It actually doesn't even need to be in the code at all. It's not used. Uh, data three and data four. Data three and data four are the two data outputs for the, uh, the power pad, your latch, your clock, and of course you're gonna need power. So if you look at a, a pinout here, data three, data four, latch, clock, five volts ground. Now, sometimes people label these different things, so be wary of that. It's clock, latch, D1, D4, D3, and five volts. Wire those up to your Arduino to match the pins on your uh, digital side, because we're using digital, we're not using analog voltage here. So if we look over here, our digital pins are lined up over here, and you can see there's two, th two three, four, five, six, seven, um, zero and one you're not gonna use. And you just wire those up accordingly. So pin two, pin three, pin four, pin five, and pin six. Again, pin four doesn't matter. You can leave it disconnected if you want. Or you can connect it. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know if this will work with a standard NES controller, like the same code, but it is intended for the power pad, so I wouldn't expect it to. So yeah, you can leave that unconnected if you want. I'll leave it up to you. But uh, five, six, two, and three are important. And then five volts in ground, you just grab from your Arduino five volts in ground, which for people that are new to Arduino are right over here. There's a five volts and a ground. And that's it uh, as far as the wiring goes. And then you have to do some stuff with the programming. You're going to need some software. Oh, I guess I'll show you some of this. This is turning out to be a lengthy video. Stick with me. This uh, Flip software. Flipped is a kind of a misleading name, it's the Atmel Flip. That's what they should call it everywhere, but it's called the Flip. Anyway, you have to download this, and then you have to follow the instructions for firmware flashing that Atmel 16U2 chip. You're gonna use this to flash brand new firmware or updated firmware onto your Arduino Uno, which then lets the Uno Joy code work, basically. I'm not going to go in on the details for how to do that, but you're going to need that program. That program will also install JavaScript. It's all bundled. And if it can do it on my old ass 32-bit Windows 7 operating system, it can probably do it for your computer. Amazingly, I was able to do this entire project on this old laptop, which I feel pretty good about. So, uh, yeah, once you get that all done, you uh, get all your software figured out and, you know, if I was making a longer video, I'd go into all that stuff, but I just, there's there's enough info around. Um, please, please, please don't send me a bunch of messages asking me how to do this. Um, I don't generally offer uh, free advice and free responses to people. I got too much going on, folks, sorry. These videos are kind of the extent of the uh, free information I put out there. I try to do what I can, but um, please look around. Use internet search engines. You can find a lot of information. I try to put stuff out that's not documented or not documented properly. So uh, connect everything to your Arduino Uno. And again, it has to be an Uno because you have to have that USB controller chip. You can't use a knockoff, can't use a later Arduino. Plug in your USB. And that, that error message was just because it was looking for the retro USB adapter. And you see here, it says Uno Joy, uh, Uno Joy Joystick. So now I go to Properties. And now we're just going to do the exact same thing as before. I'm going to take a pair of tweezers and just short those pads. So I got one on ground and one here. And what's different? It registers it. Yes. And this is a... All the buttons being registered now, not just that one. So as you can tell, there's nothing wrong with this power pad. Um, my friend really should get a refund, um, and I don't, you know, I don't mean to bash anyone's business. It does seem like a high quality, you know, injection molded. You know, it does seem well designed and it, you know, sturdy and everything. It just, it doesn't work with the power pad. It doesn't work with one of the things it's advertised with. It did work with a regular NES controller, so I'll give it that. I was able to test that. So yeah, not trying to bash anybody's business. Um, you know, I'm sure they didn't do it on purpose, but uh, my friend should get a refund for that because it did not work and I had to build this Arduino to make it work. So that's it. I'm gonna put this back all together and uh, my friend will be able to use this. Um, 
the membrane will just go across here and then all the pads will work fine. Might do a follow-up video of him uh, showing it all in action. I'm sure he'll make some videos actually. And uh, that's pretty much it. So um, Arduino stuff, not that complicated. Don't be intimidated by it. Uh, the biggest hurdle you're gonna find with this stuff is the misinformation. Um, by the way, the misinformation I'm talking about is uh, the two two things that were just like not necessary. So one big piece of misinformation is it says here, download and decompress UnoJoy and the PowerPad reader code. And it says here, upload the PowerPad reader sketch.ino. Those are wrong. And it's from uh, this website, which is very useful other than those two pieces of information, which are just wrong. Uh, if I go back here and I go to the Uno Joy, or sorry, the PowerPad master folder, you'll see here there's the PowerPad reader and the PowerPad Uno Joy code. That instruction clearly says to load this code. That's wrong. You don't use this code at all. This code is if you don't have an Uno Joy. If you're doing this to connect to a PC, which is what those instructions are for, you're only gonna use this code, the PowerPad Uno Joy code. You wanna have the .h in the same directory because it's part of the code, and you're gonna load that and program that onto your Arduino. So again, if you do find this guide or one like it, this step here, PowerPad Reader Sketch, is wrong. It's the PowerPad Uno Joy code is what you're gonna load. Uh, aside from that, the only other piece of information that's not necessarily wrong, but a completely unnecessary step in my opinion, and if you wanna save yourself some time, you can avoid, is, uh, let's see, it's, I'll show you in a second. It's on the instructions here for installing the Uno Joy. It will tell you here to go to processing.org and download it and install it and then load this visualizer sketch and check. Ignore all that. You really don't need to do that. Um, that's just way overkill. Um, all you need to do is follow the instructions, install Flip, and then go to the Arduino page for how to reflash your firmware, which is right here. It's this page, um, Arduino Hacking DFU Programming. Um, and this chip, 16U2, is what's on my Arduino, but um, I guess you could have a couple other chips. And just follow these instructions to a T, and that's all you need to do. It'll tell you everything you need to do to flash the firmware, and then you'll be able to test everything, you know. But if you want to test buttons that aren't your power pad and you, and you just want to mess around, you can install that uh, processing viewer thing. But I was only concerned with getting the power pad working, so I just ignored all that. Uh, yeah, kind of a mouthful, folks. But um, those are the two things to watch out for. So you're not going to use the reader code and you're not going to use, um, I wouldn't recommend using that processing viewer. It's another program to install. It's extra work. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully this was not just a total mess for you all to watch. Sorry for the super shaky camera, but I don't have a nice setup and time to do all sorts of video editing and tripod stuff. These videos are made for free with my free time. Hopefully you found them useful and I'm just trying to give back to the community the best I can. So uh, yeah, thanks for checking this out. Have fun hacking. Sega is better than Nintendo. Sega's technical information is better than Nintendo, and Sega users are better than Nintendo users. Huh, I said it. That's right, fanboy here. I'm just kidding. But uh, have fun doing your hacks, folks. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.